Well, hello, doubters. Recently, one of the members of DC Talk, you remember DC Talk from the famous songs like Jesus Freak, has come out and explained that he is an ex evangelical and that he is deconstructing his faith. So I wanted to take a look at a, an article where it outlines some of his story and just make some comments. So let's check out this article. The article says, DC Talks' Kevin Max says he is an ex-evangelical deconstructing and progressing. Let's take a look at some of this story here. Grammy uh, winning vocalist Kevin Max, a member of the popular Christian band DC Talk, who has released music in multiple genres, revealed over the weekend that he is considering himself an ex-evangelical. He tweeted this, Hello, my name is Kevin Max, and I am an ex-evangelical, hashtag ex-evangelical. And he is speaking... Uh, uh, sparking a large response from many of his Christian followers. Now, let me first say that I can understand someone that grew up listening to DC Talk, someone that was exposed to DC Talk early on, how someone in that genre, someone that, that's part of that fan group, when they hear that one of the leaders in that group is no longer a Christian, that can be difficult. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had John Steingard, who was one of the lead singers of Hawk Nelson on, and he talked about um, similar responses from people, some positive, some reaching out and saying, hey man, we're still here with you, we love you, uh, we'll be supporting you on your journey, and others, very disappointing. And I can imagine how some people might uh, that might cause them to kind of question their faith. Well, it's like, man, this leader that I looked up to, this artist that I thought was really solid in the Christian faith that was going out and proclaiming the gospel show after show and night after night and talking about their truth, if they're doubting, man, that raises questions, I think, for me and what that means for Christianity. And so I want to talk just a little bit more about that in just a second, but let's keep looking at this article because there's, there's some really interesting points here that this uh, article gets into. Um, other people, you know, have uh, some praise musicians for posting, uh, claiming that they were ex-evangelical, a term that has been used commonly in recent years describing individuals who no longer identify as evangelical. I do want to mention, particularly with this paragraph, that uh, evangelicalism, which is a, a subset of broad Christianity or mere Christianity, if you will, I don't think is the only version of Christianity. I want to make sure that I get that out of the way. If you disagree with me, you can go ahead and leave a comment. I would love to read that and discuss that with you. But someone saying that they're no longer evangelical um, may actually be a good thing. And maybe they've examined some of the claims specifically of evangelicalism and found them wanting, but that doesn't mean that they have abandoned their Christian faith entirely. And I think we'll see something similar to that here as we go through this article. Uh, again, he did get some, uh, you know, kind of hate mail and, and hate posts for doing this, but he clarified in another tweet, a follow-up tweet, uh, posting that he still follows the universal Christ. And I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure what he means by the universal Christ, if he just means uh, Christ of the universe, uh, which again, I think most Christians would kind of be a minimum requirement for being a Christian is that you believe in Jesus. As I've talked about before on this channel, you believe in Jesus Christ. He, he could also mean that he believes that uh, Jesus Christ uh, will ultimately save every single person, some sort of universalism in that sense, that, uh, there, that hell will be empty in that sense. There'll be no one that has rejected God. God, or even if you have rejected God on this side of death, uh, you will have a chance to uh, recommit or you have a chance to accept Jesus on the other side of death. So I'm not sure what he means here by this universal Christ, and this article doesn't get very specific with that. So I think that that's a pretty big question mark when we're looking at this article. Um, and one thing that I, I will say here in this article, if, as you're reading along with me, it says, I have no idea how many people, uh, people's blog posts or podcasts are using that announcement to further division, but I'm here for grace. And I would echo that. I, I don't think that this should cause division. I don't think that there should be um, people that are necessarily dividing over this announcement, but I think that we should respond in grace. And that's one thing that I want to do 
on this channel and in this community and in our Facebook group is for us to continue to pour out grace on those that are on this journey. And if Kevin is on this journey and he's asking some big questions, we want to come around him. We want to allow him to ask those questions. We want to help give him answers to some of those questions as he's just really looking at some of the core tenets and claims of Christianity. Let's continue. Um, he, this the, and the article kind of lays out some lyrics of a song off, I believe, an upcoming record. And there's a few things that I want to highlight here. I think it is really heartfelt. I think he is um, really digging deep into his, um, you know, kind of core in this particular song that they uh, put up here. But I want to, uh, one thing that really struck me in this um, uh, in this song that I want to talk about is is this line right here, the shame for all of the church's abuse right here. So I think there's something going on, just particularly with this line. Again, there's lots going on in the song. Um, he talks about the shame of of church abuse. And I can say as, as someone that has experienced that, uh, I'm still developing all the different angles and how I want to communicate the details of some of my story. But as I've mentioned before, um, my story uh, is kind of really undergirded by what I would describe as church abuse, as being on church staff and um, needing to go on a depression medication because of the stress that I was put under while I was on church staff, uh, spending multiple Saturday evenings uh, throwing up because of the release of stress after a Saturday night service that was just so excruciating that I would go home and basically uh, throw up and collapse in bed and then barely be able to get up to function the next morning for service. And that went on for a considerable amount of time. Uh, until I ended up being released from that church in 2009. Again, there's far more to that story, but I can fully understand how someone in uh, Christian culture going to church can can be abused, legitimately abused, whether that's physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, whether that's just uh, a, a advanced emotional stress or, or a whole bunch of emotional stress. I want to say that I am with you and that that is one of the things that sent me on my journey was wondering if the way that I was seen as to be used and, and somewhat abused by church leaders was the same way that I was seen by Jesus and wanted to know what that love really entailed. And so that really sent me on the journey to start asking some questions of the Christian faith. Does God exist? Did Jesus rise from the dead? And does he love me in that in the way that the, the church people seem to uh, just use and abuse me. And, and, and ultimately, I, I discovered, no, um, Jesus' love is far different. And those were instances where that was not the correct response. And I'm glad that God removed me from some of those as difficult as that was situations, removed me from those situations and uh, put me on a path of restoration uh, with Christians, with Jesus, and being able to fall deeper in love with him the more that I continue to study. Uh, he, he mentioned something similar um, later on in this article, which I think is really important uh, about uh, church abuse and, and how emotional hurt. Uh, many who are deconstructing have spoken out about their experiences getting hurt by the by people inside the church. Others have cited this re, their rejection of biblical teachings on sexuality as the reason for their uh, disassociating. So I think that's one of the, the major things I would agree that church abuse or being hurt by people in the church, similar to my story, is a reason that's, that people... Um, start to question or start to leave the church. And if that's you, uh, and if you're comfortable, I would love to uh, speak with you about some of that and just walk with you. Again, we have a Facebook group. The link for that is in the description of this video, and you can join that Facebook group. There's people there that have gone through similar things, uh, people that have fully deconstructed and are no longer Christians, others who have asked really big, tough questions of their faith, deconstructed, and then subsequently reconstructed, um, other scholars that are in that uh, group that are just interested in and having a dialogue with people um, out of love and with truth and with grace. And so I'd invite you to join that Facebook group. Um, there's a couple other comments I want to make on this article before I wrap up. Uh, this year marks the first... Uh, uh, this year marked the first time since the Gallup uh, organization started tracking data that fewer than 50% of Americans belong to a church 
or a religious organization. And I can imagine some of you saying, yay, that's a good thing. Um, just, just the feeling of not wanting to necessarily be kind of lumped in or grouped in with a religious organization. But on another hand, if that means that they have re- completely rejected the claims of Christianity, that they uh, at one point accepted the resurrection as true and now no longer accept the resurrection as true. Um, I think that is difficult. And that's one of the things, again, that, that I would invite you to uh, continue to subscribe or continue to watch the videos on this channel as we continue to look at that and investigate some of those claims and see, does that stand up? I did a great interview with uh, Dr. Michael Kona where we talked about some of the ins and outs of how we know that Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, I would in- encourage you to check that video out. It's on my channel. I'll go ahead and leave a card right above my head for you to check that video out. A few other uh, quick comments here on this article. Um, This is something that that, uh, Kevin says in an interview uh, with Decent Christian Talk podcast. It says, Max explains where he is at in his journey of deconstruction. I like to call it deconstruction reconstruction, he said. Any person that's really changing every day, which we do, are going to be deconstructing or going through a reconstructing. And it's a combination of both of those things. And I would agree with Kevin here, as we continue to understand who God is, as we continue to um, investigate the claims of Christianity, as we kind of sort out some of these doctrinal issues that may cause us lots of stress, as we deal with the hurt and pain from abuse, as we deal with some of the hypocrisy that we see in the church, I want to continue to invite us to doubt towards faith. And what I mean by doubt towards faith is that we can, uh, that, that when we start with the resurrection, when we look at the claims of the resurrection, and if we say these are more likely to be true than false, that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we should not uh, fear truth, because that is a truth that we should now be able to continue to ask questions along those same lines of discovering truth. As we investigate reality, as we investigate history, we can say, Jesus rose from the dead. I started there. I found that to be true based on the historical evidence. And now I'm going to continue to look at these other doctrinal issues and doubt towards faith. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. As I mentioned earlier, there is a loving Facebook group that I would want to invite you to. If you enjoyed this video or you're on this journey of deconstructing, asking bigger than life questions, asking questions of your Christian faith, and you're attempting to deconstruct and perhaps reconstruct, we hope that you continue to watch some of our videos and go uh, invite us on your journey, really, to, uh, to be... Uh, part of that journey. And so I want to continue to uh, check out this channel, subscribe, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and um, click the notification bell so that whenever we release a new video, you are uh, notified of that. We'll see you next time on Dealing with Deconstruction.